If you're watching this video, chances are you've come across a problem where someone's done something very devious. They've given you a problem where they've mixed inequalities with absolute values. It's actually not that bad of a problem as long as you remember what to do along the way. So let me give you some good tips as we go through these examples. When solving an absolute value problem that also has an inequality, uh, one of your first goals should be to try and isolate that absolute value. So that way it's the only thing on one side of the inequality sign. Now once you have it isolated, you can actually split it into two problems and then take care of each of those separately. As you split it into two problems, uh, they'll be connected in some sort of way. Here's your clues on how to connect those two problems. All you have to do is look at your inequality symbol and the direction that it goes. So if I have absolute value as less than, that's my clue that I will connect my two problems using AND. If I have absolute value greater than, then I will connect them using OR. You'll see where this plays a part as we get into the examples. All right, let's give this a try. So in my first one, I have the absolute value of 6x plus 1 half. Then I have a minus 4 less than 3. Let's work on getting those absolute values uh, isolated on one side. We'll do this by adding a 4 to both sides. Perfect. Now, looking at the direction of my inequality symbol, uh, I will split this into two problems, and they will be connected using AND. We'll hold on to that for now. Let's go ahead and split it into two problems. Because of this absolute value, I know that maybe the 6x plus 1 half, maybe that guy turns out to be positive, and there's not going to be really any chains. However, maybe this guy on the inside was actually negative. And if it was, then I'm looking at it being greater than a negative 7. So these are the two problems that I now need to solve. Let's go ahead and do that. Starting with this guy, I can subtract a 1 half from both sides. So 7 minus 1 half is 6 and a half. Let's see, what is that? 13 halves. Not too bad. And looks like divide by 6. So x is less than 13 twelfths. Perfect. Alright, on to the next one. This one, if I subtract a half, then I'm at negative 7 and 1 half. That's negative 15 halves. Okay, we'll take this one divided by 6. So x is greater than a negative 15 twelfths. All right, here's where that and comes into play. The only numbers that are solutions are the numbers that satisfy this condition and the ones that satisfy this condition. So it has to meet both of them. If you want to think of this in terms of intervals, we can go ahead and draw that out. So first I'm looking at the numbers that are less than 13 halves, and they must be greater than negative 15 halves. Well, if I start with the smaller numbers first, say those negatives, then I can include everything greater than a negative 15 over 12. However, I can't include anything over 13 twelfths, so that's where I will stop. So as long as my number falls between these two values, I know it is a solution in the original inequality. So you can see where that splitting up process comes into play, and the reason why I need to connect them is so important. Let's do another example and see if we can connect things using OR. Alright, so I have 1 plus the absolute value of 2 minus 7x is greater than or equal to 7. Again, we'll start off by trying to isolate that absolute value. So absolute value, 2 minus 7x minus 1 would give us a 6. Okay, it looks pretty good. And notice how this one, uh, the direction of that inequality symbol says, okay, I will split it into two problems. This time we'll connect them using OR. All right, here's our two problems. So maybe the 2 minus 7x was positive, in which case, no change, it's going to be exactly the same problem. 
quite possibly, maybe it's going to be negative. And then we want to look at it being less than or equal to a negative 6. Alright, let's solve these separately, see what our final solution is. I'm going to subtract a 2 from both sides. Giving me negative 7x is greater than or equal to 4. And then I'll divide by a negative 7. Note here that since I'm dividing by a negative, I will have to flip my sign. Alright, not too bad, not too bad. Alright, moving on to the other one. I'll subtract a 2 over here. Negative 8. And again, I will divide by negative 7, remembering to flip my sign. So negative 8 divided by negative 7, positive 8 sevenths. Alright, so who gets to be a solution in this case? Well, or is a little bit more flexible. This says that as long as I satisfy this condition or I satisfy this condition, then it is going to be a solution. So as long as it satisfies one of them, we're good to go. Let's write this in interval notation. So if we satisfy this condition, we are talking about the numbers from negative infinity all the way up to a negative 4 sevenths. Because it says or equals to, I'm going to include that one. Now another way we could be a solution is if we satisfy this condition. So maybe we're at 8 sevenths, or we could be greater than that, so all the way up to infinity. So our solution is in one interval, or it's in the other one. I will connect these using my symbol for union to show that either one of these intervals will work. So just like that, you can see how you can solve a linear, equa or linear inequality and how it's really important how you connect them.